All right, so for this first part on my three-part series on building a better future for military families, I'm gonna talk about bias and how it works and specifically civilian bias, which is the feelings and beliefs and maybe even convictions that some people have that military service, people who serve and their families are somehow like less than everyone else or more than everyone else, or in some way um, not as trustworthy as other average people. So a quick story to illustrate my point. Uh, Laura, my current partner and uh, then girlfriend, we were carving pumpkins or something for Halloween one year when we were dating. And my back had gone out at 31 years old. I was a paratrooper, bad backs running the family. And I'm leaning over this footstool, carving a pumpkin on the ground thinking, this is fine. Uh, this is what veterans do. And she insists that I call a nurse, the, the nurse advice line. I do, the nurse insists, you know, if you're having back pain, it's so bad that you can feel it in your balls, which I could, you should get to the, to the ER. So we go to the ER and we check in. My, she's there with me, just kind of hanging out. She's like, I'm gonna be there, I'm gonna support you. And we check in like 10, 30, 11 at night. And uh, it takes an hour to take my vitals. And then at some point, I ask for a gurney so I can lay down and stop sitting and, and take the weight off my back. And they, the nurses there make a big brouhaha, it's so difficult, blah, blah, blah. And then we're I'm laying down on a gurney and she's sitting next to me in near the nurse's station. She can hear them rambling on about other patients' information. They're like flirting with one another, like taking their sweet ass time. And there's only three people in the ER. I'm one of them. And I guess Laura's the fourth. And Laura has been working in hospital chaplaincy for years. Even at that point, she had been, she was doing a residency. So she's familiar with medical settings. In the fourth hour, we'd kind of had enough and our only option is to go across the street to the university medical system, which we did. And so we spent four hours, got nothing except vitals and a bunch of HIPAA violations. Um, we go across the street, my vitals are taken and I get a, some kind of injection of a painkiller within 25 minutes and we're done, we're out. 25 minutes in private healthcare. So we're leaving and Laura is driving and I'm kind of exhausted because now I've got you know this kind of weight off my back with the painkillers. And she said, I'll never forget this. She said, um, man, all those years you talked about the VA, I thought you were exaggerating. And she knows me well enough now and I think she probably did then that I'm, I'm not prone to exaggeration. Um, but what that disclosed was like, she didn't believe the stories I was telling her about the VA until she saw them herself. Um, that's what I mean by bias. That's what I mean when I say there's something deeper, more nuanced than trust. Like I believe civilians can trust soldiers and veterans and still treat them in a way that is untrusting. So the takeaway for part one of this series on building a better future for military families is about trust. It's about trusting people to narrate their own experiences in a trustworthy and reliable manner. Um, if you go to pewpew.substack.com, uh, my first pinned post is the basis for this video series. And you'll see the image that I've used is from a book, Believe Me, um, that was written by um, the, the journalist that brought us the Me Too movement uh, exposure. Um, and so I, I mentioned that because we already have the structure, the language, for believing people when they narrate their own experience. And all we have to do is apply it to military families. Um, trusting military families means believing them when they share their stories. Um, and so in the next couple of parts, I'll talk about political power, representation, and how those kind of intersect with this bias that we experience as soldiers and veterans, how they intersect to deprive us of human dignity, to deprive us of political power, and how civilians can ally with us to speak up and use their privilege for um, improving and, and building a better future for veterans.